Um, thank you all very much for being here. We are happy to have you and report out to give you some information that you may be looking for. I am Dr. Carla Tweed. I am the Executive Vice President here at Yuba College, and I'm your MC. I'd like to let you know that this is being recorded and will be posted afterwards if you'd like to review later to the YouTube channel. Um, and we also would like you to stay muted. If you have questions, please put those in the chat as we go. We will try to answer those. And then we will save room at the end in order to unmute you, you if you would like to um, ask questions. With that being said, I think we are going to go ahead and get started. And I get to introduce our president, Dr. Tani Dotson. Good afternoon, everyone. It is fantastic to see you. I appreciate you taking some time to join us today so that we can keep you updated on things that are happening at Yuba College. I want to start by talking a little bit about our educational master plan. In California's community colleges, our strategic plan is called an education master plan. And it's a three-year plan where we outline the things we're going to do to increase student success at Yuba College. Our goal is to create this plan in a way that is transparent and collaborative, but most importantly, that it sets outcomes and expectations for how we're going to change some of the ways that we do our work here in order to increase the chances of students succeeding in accessing our institution, in staying in their classes, we call that retention and persistence, in completing their programs, in finding that career and those transfer opportunities. Um, I am looking forward to ensuring that there is a student and student voice involved in designing this plan, and we're going to be working with your ASYC leadership to ensure that that voice is there and present throughout the process. Our goal is to have this plan completed and approved by the board in May. So that's May of 2022. Um, we expect to kick the process off here at the very beginning of November. We'll spend a couple months gathering feedback. Uh, we'll take a look at that feedback and probably go out and get some more feedback from our students, from our employees, from our community. And then the first draft will be available in late February, early March. Uh, we'll get that draft reviewed by as many constituents as possible uh, with the goal of presenting the final draft to the board at their May board meeting. I also wanted to give you an update on our paint project. Uh, for about a year now, we've been planning a external facelift of our Marysville campus, and that meant that we uh, hired some contractors to do some repair work of the sides of our buildings, and most of that repair work is actually done. They refinished the theater and fixed a lot of the walls and the gutters and the sides of our facilities, um, and the next step was to start a painting project. That painting project got underway and pretty quickly we realized that there was going to be a supply challenge. Uh, the pigment used to color that paint, the blue and gold and gray and black that we see being used throughout the campus has been in high demand. Um, we ran into a challenge with supplies uh, where we had to order some additional supplies and it was a greater than an eight week lead to get those supplies in. Unfortunately, that means that when they do arrive, it's going to be in the late November timeframe. Uh, painters need two things in order to keep painting external buildings. They need the temperature to be above 50 degrees and they need it to be dry. Um, we certainly are hoping for a, a great rainy season because of the drought that California is experiencing, but that will impact our ability to keep the paint project moving forward. So it is on a bit of a pause as we wait for those supplies to arrive. And then we wait for the temperature to get back up above and stay above 50 degrees and the rain to subside. So it's taking a lot longer than we had hoped. Um, unfortunately, COVID has impacted supply chains in a lot of ways, and this is one of them. It does, though, give us some time to start to look to our next project here at the institution, and that is a list of classroom and bathroom renovations that are going to occur. We're working with our employees now uh, to draft a list of classrooms and bathrooms that are going to get renovated over the next two years or so. 
We want to make sure that those bathrooms are brought up to our current ADA standards, um, that they're remodeled so that they're friendly for students to use. But we also want to make a difference in the place where learners learn, and that's in our classrooms. So our deans are working with our faculty to draft an initial list that'll get reviewed through our governance groups here at the institution. And that final list hopefully will be ready in the December, January timeframe so that we can move toward bidding those projects with contractors coming up with a timeline so that we can see some of our classrooms uh, updated to today's standards to make sure that learners can do their best learning and teachers can do their best teaching. The last thing I want to mention today is the uh, Yuba Community College District's vaccination proof or testing policy. Um, the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm really clear about what it is that the board has asked for us to pursue. Um, we will not have a mandated vaccine at Yuba College. Um, what we will have is some choices available for students. Uh, the first choice is that you can demonstrate that you've been vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus. And in that instance, you are free to have face-to-face uh, -face services, attend face-to-face -face classes, et cetera. Um, or you can choose to participate in the weekly testing option. Uh, we will have on-site uh, COVID testing. We actually already do in Building 500 that's available for anyone, including the public. Um, and you can participate in the weekly testing uh, so that we can keep the community safe. If you are participating in the weekly testing and you do have a negative test, then you can uh, participate in face-to-face -face classes, face-to-face -face services, et cetera. If you don't wanna do either of those things, we do have online services and online classes available to you that are an option. Um, so I'm appreciative of our board of trustees for uh, giving students and employees opportunities, options, and choices. Um, and I am hopeful that this helped you to understand the direction that we are moving. I do expect in the next few weeks that our IT staff will roll out a system that will collect pr proof of vaccination, and that'll coincide with the spring semester registration. Uh, this policy, while not yet permanent and official, um, we are moving that direction. It will be in place at the beginning of our spring semester, so that should be about January 24th for the students that are here. So you'll have some time to demonstrate either proof of vaccination from the COVID-19 uh, virus or committing to weekly testing. If you decide to do weekly testing um, or any of the options, there will be a website that will be published here in the next few weeks that walks you through the steps necessary to move in that direction and comply with the policy that we're putting in place. With that, I wanna say it is fantastic to see you. I hope you're having a great fall semester and I am gonna turn it over to my partner, Crystal Ferrer from the Associated Students of Yuba College and our student involvement staff with our next announcement. Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to let you know that Associated Students of Yuba College or ASYC are still meeting. Um, I will put in the chat the uh, link to get to Board Docs that is an open meeting and all of the information for Zoom is on the Board Docs link. We invite any students to attend um, and you are a, able to make public comment at that time. Additionally, ASYC is still accepting applications for a variety of different positions including um, senator positions. Uh, if you are not quite ready to step into say the business director, Senator Pro Tem, you can always start in ASYC with a senator position and assist in serving on a committee. Um, additionally, ASYC is looking for other students to participate both as ASYC appointed representatives, as well as at large uh, positions for a variety of different uh, governance committees, which Dr. Dotson referred to previously. This is a great way to get involved on um, our campuses, both at Sutter and at Marysville. Um, in addition, this is a really great way to get valuable leadership experience and represent students like yourselves and your fellow peers on the Zoom right now. Um, you can find applications at the bit.ly link, bit.ly slash ASYC elections. Um, and I am going to introduce the, uh, the next person up. I'm really proud to introduce Maria Onelas, our student trustee. Thank you, Crystal. Hi, everybody. My name is Maria Onelas, and I'm the student trustee for Yuba College. Uh, first, I wanted to take the time today to introduce myself and get 
and have you guys get to know a little bit about me. I am a 25 year old Mexican American female. I graduated Live Oak High School in 2014. I am a junior at Yuba College and my goal is to, my academic goals is to transfer to Chico State and to pursue a medical degree. Um, the reason why I chose to run for student trustee is because I am a student who loves to learn. I like to try new things and I also wanted to get out of my comfort zone and be involved in campus and student government. I also wanted to, um, like Crystal said, be um, represent you guys and have a student voice for you guys. I also wanted to share with you guys some of my responsibilities as a student trustee. Um, some responsibilities uh, as a student trustee is I get to sit with the board of trustees. I attend monthly board meetings. I've only attended two so far and I've learned so much. Um, attending these meetings, you get to participate in um, their, in conversations and issues that impact the students and our education, um, as well as it is also my job to report to the board and the district any um, topics relevant to students' concerns or needs. Um, next, I would like to also uh, address what my goal is uh, serving you guys as a student trustee. I want to build trust and communication within the student community. I want to help and encourage the students to not be shy and to work with me uh, to make this an enjoyable experience uh, for, for all of us here. Next, I'm gonna give you guys some updates. The Yuba College Board of Trustees adopted resolution to honor Veterans Awareness Month, which is observed on November 11th. Also, the Board of Trustees adopted resolution to acknowledge the Sikh American community. Uh, Yuba College serves a large percentage of uh, the Sikh community. So we welcome all the students with open arms. Another cool thing is that Woodland uh, College community is currently remodeling their art facility. Uh, they plan to aim a 21st century academy, <laughs> um, learning spaces for, um, to do like theater arts, music, 2D, art, 2D arts and culinary services program um, to provide for the students. Finally, um, Yuba College has upgraded their fire alarm systems. I was aware that their older, their older buildings didn't have a fire alarm systems. So now they are, they're remodeled and they finally provide us a campus-wide um, emergency, emergency messages. Um, and this would also uh, meet all of California building codes. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, you guys can ask me. And I will pass this on to, was it Carla? And that concludes my report, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. We are happy to have you to participate with us and to help support your fellow students. Um, for I Again, I'm Dr. Carla Tweed, and I want to let you all know that um, for your academics, I want you to look forward. We have already been building your spring classes. I want to let you know that we are trying to offer more face-to-face. -face. For those of you that like to have the in-person instruction, we will continue to do online as well. Um, but we definitely want to create more space of community for you to come back and, and learn. Um, with that being said, start looking at your courses, start planning your schedule. Priority registration is already around the corner. We're at the end of, no, of October and priority registration begins November 15th. That's all I have for the instructional part and aspects. And I'm going to turn it over now to Director of Counseling, Chris Sanchez. Thank you, everyone. I just wanted to remind you that currently Yuba College is a CalFresh um, uh, outlet so that we can help students apply for CalFresh. This is a program that helps you get um, uh, food cash aid in order for you to be able to purchase groceries. So please stop by the Welcome Center right there in the 100A uh, B building, and we can help you apply for CalFresh. In addition to that, we also have a pantry and the pantry is there and available to help students that may be in need of food. Uh, you're welcome to come once a week. We are open on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 to two. So please join us if you're in need. We also provide family meals. 
So if your family is in need of a meal, please stop by and we'd be happy to help you. The EOPS program, Extended Opportunity Program and Services, uh, peer mentors uh, who meet with students. Um, these are our peer mentors that will be contacting students and meeting with students. Uh, part of the EOPS program is to offer additional assistance to students. And also just as a reminder, EOPS is currently taking applications for new students. We definitely wanna make sure that you know that we are available to help students in any way that we can. Stop by the EOPS office, pick up an application or look for the EOPS program online and you can submit your application online. We wanted to share with you a little bit about the Student Services 100B building. In this building, we want to celebrate community, not competition. So we're all working together to um, decorate our areas and make sure that all, everyone can see that Yuba College is here to serve students, but also to have a little bit of fun and share um, how our spirit is in um, all these festivities, following festivities this um, month. I just want to remind you, we do have a transfer center and we have Sacramento State representatives on campus. They're actually going to be here this Friday to meet with students. And you can meet with a um, Sac State representative virtually um, or by telephone or face-to-face. -face. They will also be presenting workshops on how to complete your application to attend Sac State. The college also is it has um, uh, CSU application workshops for, to help you complete for any CSU you'd like to attend. In addition to that, uh, CSU Chico uh, representative Sarah Wood is also available to meet with students for those students that are thinking about transferring to Chico and have some questions. You can always call um, the counseling department if you need any assistance in scheduling an appointment to meet with any of these representatives. Lastly, I want to make sure that everyone knows that we have Saturday virtual appointments. We know and understand that some of our students um, work and maybe a Saturday would be a great time for them to meet with a counselor to plan their classes out for the spring semester or to complete a comprehensive educational plan. So we are here. You can schedule an appointment by calling our office or you can join our virtual office through Zoom and we will help you schedule an appointment for one of these um, upcoming Saturdays. Waiting for the next slide or am I, I'm passing it on to someone else but I'm not sure who it is. It's me. Hi, students. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, you may have heard, right? This is me. Yeah. You may have heard that October is the month that our nation sets aside time to specifically acknowledge the disability rights movement, the contributions of people with disabilities in our workforce, and the value of individuals with disabilities overall. Yuba College is excited to take this opportunity to learn all we can about the history and the progression of disability rights in our country. And we encourage you all to check your student emails regularly throughout the month to explore the information that will be sent out. Um, the DSPS department is the office at Yuba College that coordinates educational accommodations and services for students with disabilities at our campus. And disability categories include hearing or vision impairments, learning disabilities, including things like dyslexia, mobility limitations, acquired brain injury, autism, ADHD, mental health disabilities like PTSD, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and then a, a all encompassing kind of category called other, which includes things like diabetes, cancer, or asthma, we even provide services for temporary disabilities, including sports injuries, surgeries, and high-risk pregnancies. So if any of those conditions have impacted you, we encourage you to come talk with us. 
If you're a student who had an IEP or a 504 plan in high school, but you haven't connected with our department yet, please contact us. We'd love to work with you to set up an accommodation plan for you here at Yuba. And we'd be honored to support you as you work towards your educational goals. We're in building 1800 right off the West parking lot, or you can find our contact information under DSPS on the Yuba website. And uh, that's it for DSPS. I do want to mention that um, we're going to be having a Seize Candy fundraiser, and we'll send out announcements for that in the next week or so. So if you're um, thinking about purchasing chocolate for the upcoming holidays, don't do it yet. Wait till you get our information. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks again for joining us today. And now I turn it over to Martine and financial aid. Can we get the next slide, next please? Slide, please. I'm frozen. Okay, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Martin Gutierrez, Director of the Financial Aid Office. And I have some important information about financial aid. The first information that I want to share is about the CARES grants payments. Um, so uh, our administration uh, approved a third disbursement of CARES payments to students. Uh, below the, the, the information, I can see that you can see the eligibility criteria that was used to, to grant the the the, the CARES payment that went out on October 1st. So the base funding uh, was for students who were uh, AB 540, students with disabilities, students who, um, who are enrolled uh, or have completed college or transfer in, um, level English and, math, and or math, students enrolled in at least uh, one ESL or ESL OL course. Um, Something happened to the PowerPoint. I'm not seeing it. So we're having technical difficulties there. The person who's hosting this keeps freezing. We're trying to get a um, co-host in order to fix it, but until it unfreezes. So Martine, if you can keep- I, I, I can keep going. Yes, I have the, the PowerPoint in, in my, okay. my computer. So. So there was a base funding and then a supplemental for students who were part of the TRIO, uh, CalWORKs, EOPNS, Food Pantry, Military, and receive also the, the, the BOC fee waiver or the PROMISE, what we know. And there was a, a, a supplemental for any students who completed a FAFSA who were independent and, then, and they had at least one dependent in the household, okay? Now, so we did process again a payment that went out on October 1st. Uh, it went out to 3,560 students for a total of $2,082,650. That was just what was approved uh, to distribute directly to students. In addition to this uh, CARES payment, some of the students also had the opportunity to submit a CARES application that was uh, uh, located in our website. And so those students who submitted a, uh, a CARES application online, those were processed in a first come first serve basis. Out of those, we were able to grant it to 421 students uh, for a total of $200,000, dollars okay? Now, one important thing about the CARES is uh, we got approved for a limited amount of funds. At this point, all the funds have been distributed to students. So the CARES application online has been closed. Um, but what is going to happen is, is very important, okay? So these payments were processed to students. If, if, you, if you have a, a bank mobile refund preference selected with them, either a direct deposit to a personal bank account, or you opted to have a bank account with bank mobile, you are completely fine because you have access now to your uh, CARES funds. 
if you haven't done any refund preference with Bank Mobile, we're gonna be waiting for about 120 days. If you do not pro, uh, successfully create a preference with Bank Mobile, we're gonna cancel that, that payment out and then uh, re redistribute those funds to other eligible students. So it's very important that if you haven't done that with Bank Mobile, make sure to do that right away. For assistance, you can call, email, or visit financial aid uh, virtually or in person, and we will ha happy to help you uh, uh, select a refund preference with Bank Mobile. Next slide, please. This, uh, this in this slide, we wanna emphasize the importance of the 22-23 FAST application that opened up on October 1st. Uh, we sent emails last Friday to remind students to start that renewal process or completing that application uh, uh, so that <clears throat> there's two important components on the, uh, completing the FAFSA. One is if you can show proof that you completed your FAFSA application by October 29, financial aid has a, a gift for you. All you need to show us proof that you completed it and you uh, completed it, submitted it, and, and you'll be receiving a gift from financial aid. Okay. The second important part about completing your 22, 23 fast on time is if you can do that before March 2nd of 2022, now you're gonna be entering into the California Cal Grant program for entitlement Cal Grants. This year, 21, 22, Students who submitted FAFSAs on time before March 2nd, they were included in a competitive Cal Grant. So students had to compete to be able to qualify for Cal Grants. Now for 22-23, you're gonna be under an entitlement. Guarantee if you can submit your FAFSA on time before the deadline of March 2nd. Okay. The second part on this slide is that uh, Juba College is now hiring students. Uh, the financial aid department receives funding from the Department of Education to employ students under the federal work study program. There are a lot of departments on campus that are in need of student help. So if you have completed your FAFSA, you have financial need demonstrated through your FAFSA application, you're enrolled in at least six units and you are maintaining satisfactory academic progress, we will be happy to help you get employed in one of our departments uh, on campus, okay? And so if you have any questions, again, you can reach us over, over the phone, email, virtual office, or in person. And now I'm gonna pass the presentation to Mia with TRIO. Hello, everyone. My name is Mai and I'm one of the um, specialists here, um, uh, was it at and the um, Student Support Services or in short SSS program here at Yuba College. And um, I'm here to share with you all about our wonderful um, program. And uh, just very quickly, the Student Support Services program or in short SSS, we are a federally funded program designed to help students from disadvantaged backgrounds, whether um, you're low income, you're a first generation student, or you're a student with disabilities, be able to succeed um, here at Yuba College, um, whether this is getting your certificate, your associate's degree, or transfer to a four year university. And we uh, provide a wide variety of services, um, and they include priority, re priority registration meaning that um, you'll get to register for classes at an earlier date compared to the general student population. We also pro um, provide college campus tours, um, academic and transferring advising, where you'll get to meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our um, own uh, SSS counselors. Um, and then we also provide tutoring and provide information and assistance to any available financial aid program. Um, I also uh, want to highlight that students who qualify for our program and they are low income uh, may be eligible for a grant aid. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will be dropping um, our flyer uh, in the chat box. It has a QR code um, that will take you to our online application. And then I'll also put down my, uh, what is it? Yuba College uh, email. 
And we are located in the, in the 300 building in room 302, right next to the bookstore. Um, so uh, drop by and uh, ask questions, uh, say hi, and we'll be happy to um, uh, answer any questions that you have. And then I believe I'm passing it next to Chris. Thank you, Mai. Um, I wanted to talk about the services at Sutter County Center. We are open there Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Fridays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We do provide services there. Admissions and records is available to you. There is also academic support, library and tutoring services. And one more thing I wanted to mention that is available at the Sutter Center and that is counseling appointments. We do have a counselor there on site on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, again, appointments are available face-to-face, -face, telephone, through telephone, or through Zoom, whichever works for you. Next slide, please. This is a very important um, uh, services that Yuba College is providing to all uh, students. It's telehealth services. And Yuba College has contracted with Timely Care to be able to provide um, health services for all students. You do need to register. It is accessible 24 seven, meaning 24 hours a day, seven days a week to not only support your medical needs, but any mental health issues that you, or mental health support that you might need. Uh, when you speak to someone, if you need additional um, services, they do refer you out to someone in our local area. There is no cost for this service. So we want you to definitely reach out to these services. In addition, Timely Care is hosting a registration contest uh, for a $100 gift card to Amazon during the month of October. So go and register and hear uh, timelycare.com um, slash Yuba College. Uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer any questions regarding the telehealth services through timely care. Next slide goes to Crystal. So I wanted to bring everyone's attention to our cultural heritage calendar. On the right, um, we have an outline of all of the, uh, the cultural heritage months that we will be observing and recognizing this academic year. Um, I would invite everybody to stop by the Identity and Engagement Center, which is located at our Marysville campus in the cafeteria to join us for some really fun opportunities and activities over the next few months. Um, if any of you were available just yesterday, we hosted a uh, Dia de los Muertos sugar skull painting event. It was a lot of fun um, and we look forward to more events such as that. Um, this month, uh, as we closed out Latinx Heritage Month uh, on the 15th, we celebrate um, and honor LGBTQIA plus history month throughout October. And in November, we're excited to uh, be recognizing Native American and Indigenous Peoples Heritage Month. Um, once again, keep an eye out on the Yuba College app if you haven't already downloaded it. That's a great way to get information about what events are going on on our campus. And we will be posting about upcoming events uh, within the next week. Um, next slide as well, I think is, yeah, campus life. Um, in addition to the cultural heritage calendar, we have a bunch of really fun events uh, going on, including Yuba College Game On. That's hosted twice a month inside the cafeteria at the Marysville campus as well. Um, anytime you uh, have a break during your classes, feel free to stop by the cafeteria. There is a large number of games, puzzles, um, I think bop it. Somebody hit 100 for a high score and is now at the, um, the beatbox mode. So I challenge anybody to beat those scores. Um, it's just a really great way to relax in between classes uh, while maybe you've gotten lunch at one of our food trucks. Um, coming up on the 28th, we have National Chocolate Day. We'll have chocolate hosted throughout the, the campus. So go ahead and grab some if you see a, a jar. On uh, the 29th in the evening, we'll be hosting a trunk or treat. Uh, Campus Life is coordinating with the Veterans Resource Center and Veteran Services to offer this. And then also the 28th, that's gonna be Thursday evening, the night before, is our fall instrumental concert. Um, that will be at 7.30 p.m. in the theater. So hopefully we'll be able to see you two evenings in a row that week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys soon. 
Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Christina Venucci for the next update. Thank you, Crystal. Um, tutoring services is going on on both of our campus and we still have tutoring available. If you need help with any of your classes, um, you have writing assignments that are due, um, we have help that is available for you. We have three centers that are available to meet your needs. Um, the College Success Center mainly does our STEM and content tutoring. So anything that is not like science, technology, engineering, and math falls under that content tutoring. So if you are in psychology or vet tech, sociology, any of history, um, anything else, um, stop in there and Riley and Kui would be happy to help you. Um, they are open eight to seven, Monday through Thursday and eight to 4.30 on Friday. If you have writing needs, our ESL, the WLDC is there for you and they have the same hours. And then across the river at our Sutter County Center, um, we have our tutoring services there. They primarily do STEM um, services as well as writing assistance and their hours are posted as well. So please stop in if you need help with anything, even if it's just to stay high. Um, the instructional associates, Riley, Hui, Ron, and Stephanie would be happy to see you um, and our tutors would be happy to help. I am going to pass it on to Sarah. I know Sarah was going to be having to call in and I'm not seeing her on the call. So we'll just talk about the bookstore updates. You can go to the Yuba uh, bookstore by going to Yuba shop. And who's, Jeremy, can we go to the next slide? I'll introduce this one really quickly. Uh, we encourage everybody to stay updated. As I mentioned in my previous statement, the Yuba College app is one of the number one ways to stay connected with what's going on at both our Sutter County Center campus and at the Marysville campus. Um, it's a great way to connect with fellow students as well. Uh, also stay in touch through our Facebook. You can reach that at facebook.com slash ycproud and Instagram at yuba.college. I think that might wrap it up for that. And I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you so much, Crystal. So now we are at the end of the time. If anybody has any questions, we also are gonna have a drawing for those of you that came and participated. But before we do the drawing, are there any questions? I know that was a lot of information for everybody. If you have any follow-up, please contact the, the emails that have been provided in the chat and call. We're, help, we're, we're happy to help. 